let's talk about the basic features that you should see. We could talk about nevi and melanoma for days and days, but these are some features that are warning signs for melanoma. None of them are by themselves totally 100% definitive of melanoma, but I'm going to show you some classic examples so that you can know. So side to side asymmetry, if I see a melanocytic lesion, if I draw a line down it from, from the surface of the skin down to the subcutis, if the right side and the left side look different, I stop and think, am I sure that this is benign and not melanoma? It doesn't mean that it's melanoma, but it's, it's a warning sign. If I see one side, the right-hand side of the lesion looks different than the left, then i got to figure out an explanation for why that is. Because nevi often are symmetric, but melanomas have a tendency to kind of grow differently on one side than on the other. If I see pagetoid spread, confluent growth or an abundance of single cells in the epidermis. If I see lack of maturation in the dermis, severe cytologic atypia or dermal mitotic activity. Those are all features that make me think about melanoma. And again, I can see nevi that have mitoses in them or have atypia or have a weird pattern of maturation. Um, you can see confluent growth in a nevus that's been, you know, recurrent over a, a biopsy site. So again, there's exceptions to every one of these things. And that's part of why Dermpath is very challenging because none of these rules are perfect. All right, so there's the, the caveats for all of that. So you got to put all of it together. This is classic pagetoid spread, very atypical melanocytes, even with some mitotic figures, and they're spreading um, with a pagetoid pattern like buckshot into the epidermis all the way up to the top of the epidermis. So that's very characteristic. The other thing is I, if I see atypical melanocytes in the epidermis, and a bunch of solar elastosis in the dermis, I'm going to be considering that potentially melanoma until I can find another explanation. It's not that you can't see an atypical nevus in old sun-damaged skin, but you've got to be very, very careful, especially on the skin of the head and neck. That's a time where if I see atypia in sun damage on the face or the scalp of an older person, I am extremely cautious in that setting because many of those lesions are going to be melanoma, probably most. This is an example of confluence where the, the basal layer of the epidermis is being replaced by uh, melanocytes. And especially when you've got numerous atypical ones like you see here, well, this is pretty easy. In practice, though, confluent growth, I think, is something that's easy to talk about. But in practice, it's actually a lot more challenging, and it's not usually as straightforward as this. So I'm going to teach you that feature, but I'm going to tell you that it's, it's really something that actually is, I think, challenging to evaluate in practice, unless it's really dramatic like this case here. Sometimes confluence causes this artifactual separation of the epidermis and dermis, the so-called unzipping artifact or the melanocytic blister. This is not a blister in real life in vivo. It's, a, it's an in vitro artifact where there's so many melanocytes that the epidermis gets pulled apart from the dermis during tissue processing from all the shrinkage of the tissue that happens. Um, there's just not enough uh, basal keratinocytes with hemidesmosomes to hold it down to the dermis. So if I see that, that is a good clue for the presence of of um, uh, confluent growth. And here there's also pagetoid spread and, and um, there was probably atypia in the dermis if I recall from this case. Maturation is another thing where we talk about it a lot, but in real life it can be tricky to evaluate. It's usually only very helpful in really big thick lesions. Um, you know, where you have a lot of melanocytes going way down into the dermis. So here you can see huge nests and large melanocytes all the way down to the deep aspect of this lesion. That's very abnormal. Normally, nevi start with larger melanocytes and larger nests up top. And as you go deeper, they trickle down and become little single cells that trickle out into the dermal collagen. And I've got whole videos about nevus and melanoma on my, my Kiko uh, page and my YouTube channel. So you can check that out if you need some refresher there. Obviously, if we see big, ugly, atypical cells, and we're very concerned for melanoma, or if I see dermal mitosis, particularly massive atypical ones like this. So these are obviously all very dramatic examples. In real life, it can be a lot more nuanced and subtle. And I still struggle with hard melanocytic lesions basically every day of my practice, even after being in practice for about nine years now. So as a you know, board certified dermatopathologist. So if you find them challenging, you're in company with all of us. We've, we, most dermpaths would agree that melanocytic lesions can be very challenging.